taking it on face value, it seems the scientists have proven that conservative women are better looking than lefty women. <laughs> An artificial intelligence study by researchers from Denmark and Sweden has launched to test if this new AI phenomenon could determine a person's political views just by looking at their face. Impressively and scarily, the technology was correct for 61% of women and 65% of men. The algorithm found a notable link between conventional attractiveness in women and conservative opinions and values. Which all leads me to this week's duel. Are right-wing women more beautiful than left-wing women? And if so, why? Joining me now is my sidekick and UK director of the Common Sense Society, Emma Webb. And my nemesis for this week is the former deputy leader of the Green Party, Dr. Sharar Ali. Um, Dr. Ali, I'm going to start with you. Why is left-wing politics so ugly? Well, I think, first of all, it's important to point out, I mean, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. This is quite a reductive way of treating ugliness or beauty. Um, personally, I would even evaluate somebody's uh, beauty as how they form their beliefs, how they express themselves, and their character, actually what they think and what they say, mm. is very important to me. But insofar as there may be a kernel of truth in this, and I do think there is something to the study and science of faces, I mean, obviously we read people's emotions, mm. uh, it, there could be more to it in terms of physiology, possibly even genetics. But I think insofar as there, there's something in this, um, I do believe that, particularly in a Western liberal democracy, where people have their basic needs met. Mm. There's something going on in politics at the moment. In the left in particular, it's becoming increasingly authoritarian. And if we just define very quickly what we mean by left and right politics, yeah. I would say traditionally, although this isn't universally the case, right-leaning politics tends to be libertarian in inspiration. So we are, we're familiar with the idea live and let live. In fact, both camps try and lay claim to that. They say live and let live. Mm. But I don't think truly that the left actually believes that any longer. A, a great... A uh, portion of left politics now is uh, obsessed with getting people to live in a particular way in the way that they want. If you think about be kind, that's actually passive aggressive. Mm. And insofar as it's an injunction, not just to live as you like, but to live as we tell you to and not to depart from a particular norm, which we may potentially want. Well, I say we, right? I don't necessarily agree with this. I'm taking the Green Party to court over some of it. Insofar as there is an injunction to actually impose a way of living, mm. I think that can result in a disturbance in, in the mind which reveals itself in the face. So in that sense, there could be something to this. OK, OK. Uh, Emma, um, where I disagree with Shahar, Shahar is that he said beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think beauty is objective, and I think this mm -hmm. study proves that. Well, I do agree that beauty is objective. Um, obviously, there are some things that are... That doesn't mean that there's, you know, not variation in what people find beautiful, but I do believe in a kind of transcendent, objective understanding of beauty. Um, what I think was, was so interesting about this study, because, of course, we know that, you know, people's internal ex existences, their mental health, as one example, is something that, you know, can wear on your face. And... Um, this study, what was so interesting about this is that lots of other studies have found, um, or at least according to the reports, there have been other studies that have found that there are a, a worse a sort of that people on the on the left, particularly young women under 30 mm. on the left, have worse mental health. Mm. Um, and that's something that could potentially show in your appearance. Um, and this AI also identified that women on the left um, were identified by the AI as looking more contemptuous. So yes. it's things to do with whether or not you're, you, you have a sort of um, a resting smile face like Emily Carver or, <laughs> or a resting miserable face like mine. So probably the AI would have identified me as being on the left. Um, but it's, I think it's interesting because, you know, whilst I do think, and there are lots of many, many beautiful women on the left, I can think of many who um, are on this channel regularly, people like Amy Nickell, who I think is very beautiful and she's on the left. So I don't think that we can draw the conclusion that <laughs> women on the left are not attractive. Um, I think it's just saying that women who are attractive tend to be right wing. Yeah. Not that women on the left can't be attractive. Yeah, and I think, I mean, there are, there are other aspects to this as well. I think that um, particularly on the far left, the kind of anti for left, you do see people trying to sort of augment their appearances in various ways to, that would perhaps detract from 
natural beauty, mm. possibly. So mm. maybe there's something in that as well. Um, but I do think it's interesting that there could be maybe a correlation between struggles with mental health and the way that you appear, or at mm. least uh, the way that you are identified as appearing by AI. Yeah. Shara, there's something in that, in that uh, liberal women are statistically unhappiest and have the most mental health issues. Is it just that liberalism is a mental health issue? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to be very careful generally about, you know, some of the generalisations we've been making and yeah. the distinction between correlation. Notably, in that study, they did do the socioeconomic control. Yeah. So I would have been concerned at the outset, well, hang on, there are a whole set of life circumstances which people who might traditionally want to vote Conservative, for example, mm. uh, find themselves uh, in, in a happier circumstance in the first place. So after correcting for that, yeah. to find that... Um, I just do want to say something for the left, since I still take myself to be <laughs> broadly in that camp uh, politically. Mm. I think there are some things which I would regard as um, inadequate uh, responses to injustice. And I think insofar as the left agitates and rails against injustice, um, that will also cause a kind of disturbance which may reveal itself in contortion um, Anger, you know, mm. justified anger, I think, is something that you may be more likely to find. Yeah. It's the self-righteousness which I think is problematic. It's the idea that um, there are different conceptions of the good. I think in a, in a habitable, political, secular space, I think it's incredibly important that we... Um, true liberalism is respect people's capacity and um, will mm. voluntarily to adopt different forms of life without necessarily policing them too much. And I think that, in that sense, left politics are becoming increasingly oppressive. In a way which they don't, themselves don't, the ones who do this, who perpetrate this, yeah. they, they don't realise it. It's no. that, it's that um, obsessiveness, it's the um, morally proselytising overdrive, which I think we can cause this. Self-righteousness without any self-awareness. Uh, Emma, on a final question here, I mean, I mean, this doesn't just involve women, it's also men. Mm -hmm. Men with happier faces tend to be right-wing too. Uh, but the, the, the link here in these reports was that perhaps it's down to the mainstream media, which it found to be mostly left-leaning too. Could it be that the harmful narratives and the harmful advice being perpetrated by the left-wing media is what's causing these women on the left to be unhappy? Well, is it interesting because you hear a lot about climate anxiety, people mm. having breakdowns because they're so anxious that the world is ending. They feel the weight of the world is on their shoulders because only they can save it from climate disaster or from systemic oppression. Yeah. Um, people who are, have been led to believe that society is against them and that they're oppressed. And, of course, if you have a crisis of values, a crisis of meaning, you have the transience and instability in your life um, and perhaps even mental health issues that come along with that, mm. of course that is going to have some kind of consequence for your appearance. And now I don't trust AI's ability to identify any, any form of transcendent beauty, but I do think it's interesting that it was able with, with a 60, almost 60% um, accuracy, 61% accuracy. 61 accuracy, for women, 65 for men. Um, but it was able to pick up on those differences, which, which suggests that maybe our ideas really do have some kind of effect on, well, on the way that we live our lives, and the way that we live our lives obviously have, has an effect on the way that we, we look.